My heart is heavy with it this morning. And last Sunday night, sitting in the hospice room with my dad, the Lord began to deal with me about this message for today. And I hope that I can preach it the way he wants me to. Uh, you know, sometimes I you try to envision when you're a preacher how you should preach a message and where to raise your voice and where to let it go down. But my prayer this morning that, that God would take over uh, my thoughts and, and my emotions and, and whatever it is, that's what it is. And, uh, but this is a very sober passage of Scripture. We're going to read it in the entire story here. The Bible says this in the book of Luke 16 and verse number 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of souls and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and Likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would ascend him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. And we'll stop reading, reading there. Father, I pray you take the reading of your word and you would bless it and you would use it for those that hear. And God, I pray that we would come away from our thoughts of the world and of home and, and all the things that are going on around us in our life, the politics, the the finances, all the things that in life that, that try to distract us and, and that God we would settle in this morning and, and ponder these, this passage of Scripture and what is taking place here and God what you want to do in it for our hearts. And uh, Lord I pray that if there's one lost and we know that they are that is listening today that God that they would seriously consider that their time is running out and that, Lord, they need to be saved. And God, I pray that you bless the preaching of your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to notice, first of all, about Lazarus before we get to the rich man here. I'm just going to give you the thoughts that the Lord has given me and as I was sitting in the, the room there and listening to my dad breathe and not hardly be able to breathe. And um, what God was doing for me there. And uh, I, as I was pondering this passage of Scripture, uh, I began to think about Lazarus and, and how Lazarus 
one day was carried to uh, to this rich man's gate and and laid there. He could obviously he couldn't get there on his own. The Bible said he was laid there. So that means someone had to carry him, whether it be on a stretcher or in their arms or on their shoulders, whatever the case might be. Someone carried this man to this man's gate. And they laid him there. And then we read on a little bit further and, and uh, how when Lazarus died, he passed away and, and how, how the Bible says that the angels carried him to Abraham's bosom. And I began to think about that and how, how Lazarus, uh, for the better part of his life, how God had made sure that there was someone to carry him where he needed to be. And I want to say this about myself. For 33 years, God has carried me and He has turned me and He has had me in my life. For 33 years, the Holy Ghost of God has carried me everywhere I needed to go. Amen. Amen. And then there's coming a day when He's done carrying me. I don't know if it be the Holy Ghost or some angels, but He's going to carry me to heaven. Yeah. Oh, what a wonderful thought that, that God is going to make sure that you're carrying it, amen? Because there's times when you can't do it, you say. Amen. And so that was a real blessing to my heart that, that I knew that God was carrying me. Now sometimes He uses people to do that, doesn't He? Yeah. Sometimes... Uh, yeah, the brother or sister that really cares about you and loves you, they'll text you, they'll call you, they'll slip up, put their arm around you, and they'll help you bear your load. Yeah. Oh, what a blessing it is to have God's people to help carry your load. Yeah. Lazarus had people help carry him. But there's coming a day when nobody can carry you to heaven, only God can take care right. of that. Amen. Amen. And He's going to do that for you if you say. Now we want to look mostly today at this rich man. And uh, I want to look at this passage of Scripture as a whole and, and kind of take it down and, and think about some different thoughts here. I want to notice first of all this and, and uh, the, the sadness of this passage of Scripture. I, I know I've, read, I've read the Bible through many, many times and, and I have seen a lot of sad passages of Scripture. I have seen uh, in the judgments of our Old Testament prophets and how God uh, brought judgment upon His people and, and the land of Israel and how He brought judgment upon the Gentile nations. And, and brother, some of that stuff is hard. And, 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 but I, I don't know of another passage of Scripture that's more sad than this passage. And I want to give you two thoughts of why I believe that. Number one is it did not have to go this way. Right. This man, this rich man, did not have to go to hell. You say, how do you know that, Richard? Because God made sure that he had a witness in his gate. God made sure he loved this man so much that he laid a man in his gate. Yeah. It was on his way to heaven. It didn't have to go this way. Sorry. It just didn't have to go this way. It's a sad thing when someone goes to hell when he didn't have to. Mm -hmm. It just didn't have to. You know I've prayed for my dad over the years and asked to pray for him. And I've asked over and over and over and over again, God, would you put somebody in his path? God, would you put somebody in his path? I don't know how many times I've prayed that. And, and I've prayed, Lord, just one more time, would you put somebody in his path? And I'll watch God do that. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how many people God has put I was going through his phone the other night and, and Dad was 
for all intents and purposes, was gone. I mean, he was not conscious anymore after Sunday morning. And uh, I was going through his phone and looking at his text. He said, you ought not to have done it. Well, I did it anyway. <laughs> and I was interested in who was talking to him and what they were saying. I come up on, I don't know the guy, but I, I read a text. He said, Jim, I want you to know God loves you. And I do. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine uh, how much God loved this man in this passage of Scripture by laying this man at his gate? Yeah. Oh, my son. Yeah. It's sad because it just didn't have to go this way. It just didn't have to go this way. Secondly, it's sad. Because it cannot be changed anymore. Can't do nothing about it. I can't change this rich man's eternity. Nobody can. And God ain't. I'm not going to limit God. God can do anything he wants to. But according to the Word of God here, God's not going to change. When a man slips from this life into the next, into eternity, your decision has been made. Right? Yeah. And you're going to have to live with that all through eternity. Yeah. Now the whole desire is that, that a man, God, so loved the Word that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. He wants everybody to be saved. Yeah. But there's some yeah. people saying no. Yeah, we do. No matter how good It's sad because it didn't have to be this way. And it's sad because it cannot be changed. As I begin to ponder this, I begin to ponder this thought that it talks about both of them how they died. Or at least that they died. And, and I began to wonder. And, and again, a lot of this comes from what I've experienced in the last week. You know that. Uh, but I, I, I laid there, I sat there and for a solid week and watched a man die. So. And, and it's, I've asked God, God, don't. I, I, I don't know, I don't have much choice in this thing of how Derek's going to die. I, I'm too chicken to put a gun in my head, okay? I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot, but I've asked the Lord, Lord, don't let me die like that. To drown. And you don't fluid. I, I don't want to go that way. If God be gracious, then God will do it. But I, I began to wonder about these two men. It doesn't give details on how they died. But I, I asked myself the question, was it sudden? Or was it slow? This is something we all think about. Every one of us in this room, if the Lord don't come back, every one of us in this room are going to... There's a, there's a, it's a point on the man who wants to die. Right. Yes. You have an appointment you've got to make. Yes. And you ain't going to be late for it. You're going to die. Yes. I'm going to watch. More than likely, I may not say to my grandkids that will be going. I will not. But I thought about how to die. I, I don't know how that it doesn't give us the details. But did they die suddenly? Or did they die slow? That, that's the thought that uh, is worth thinking about. Uh, for one reason, you don't know what day you're appointed to die. And if you're appointed to die suddenly, then, then you don't have a chance if you ain't got saved. Because all of a sudden you're gone. Right there, I'd rather die slowly than I can get it right with God. Let me tell you something about dying slowly. 
you ain't thinking about God, you're thinking about trying to live. Mm -hmm. It gets to the point where you're not even conscious. No. I don't want to have to die. And we notice this thirdly. I notice that the rich man, we, we've already talked about the the man that Lazarus that the Bible said he was carried by the angels. But the rich man, it doesn't say that. Uh, what did it say? It, it said uh, that uh, he he died. Uh, the rich man in verse 22 also died and was buried, and, and, in, and, it, and it doesn't stop. It's not a period. It goes on to say, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes. And so when the rich man died, he, he died, uh, whether it was slow, whether it was uh, suddenly, but he died. And, but when he left this earth, when he left this world, we find that this man was not carried by anybody. When he died, he was buried, and he went to hell. He left up his eyes, and he was in hell. Yes. He wasn't carried there. He fell there. Right. He went straight there. What are you saying? I'm saying he was singular. He was all alone. When you make the journey from this world into eternity. If you go to hell, it's going to be all by yourself. You talking about lonely. You talking about fearful. You're going to have to make that journey by yourself. It is alone. You're not carried by anybody to this place. You just drop right off into it. You're suddenly there. You're swiftly there. What a horrible thought. Lazarus, he was accompanied by angels. But the rich man, he went, he died all over. Fourthly, I'm going to say this. I want to notice this subject. His suffering. We find that he dies, and the Bible said in hell, he lift up his eyes in verse 23. And then it says, being in torments. He is suffering here. He is suffering beyond our imagination. He is literally on fire. I'm not going to try to take the time to go through all the scriptures and prove to you that there is a heaven. Yeah. God in the Bible says that, that there is a heaven and there is a hell. Yeah. And if you die lost, you're going to go to hell. Yeah. And this man died lost. He went straight to hell all by himself. Yeah. And the first thing you see, he's in torment. Yeah. Yeah. He's burning. He's on fire. No sense about him. He's conscious of who and what he sees. He's in torment, it said, and it said, and see it. Abraham, Abraham was far off. And he can't get to him. He cannot touch him. But he can talk to him, he can see him. I don't know how all that operates. But this man was conscious in hell. This, this thing of soul sleep is a myth. When you die and you go to hell, you're conscious of your surroundings. You're conscious of what's happening to you. You think that this life is hard. That ain't nothing. He got to the place with the head. I said, you know, I, I was trying to get it to where they couldn't dope him up no more so I could talk to him one more time. Mm -hmm. 
when I saw that it got to the place where that wasn't going to happen. And so every time I saw him getting a little agitated, I went to the nursing and said, he needs a little more. He said, why did you do that? Because I knew that that may be the only comfort he ever had. I'm saying in hell there's torment. There, it, your conscience of who you see, your conscience of what you see, and of what you hear. I, I thought about this out of all the members of his body. He asked for his tongue. Now, why is that? Well, why would he ask for his tongue? Why didn't he ask for his feet? Or his legs, or his stomach, or his, his eyes, or his head, his ears. Why? I'll just give you what I thought. Because it was with that tongue. He said, no. I will not take Christ. I will not be saved. That tongue was just on fire. The Bible talks about that in Genesis, and set on fire of hell. Yeah. What do you say, Rick? I'm saying that the man is conscious. He knows what he's seeing. He knows what he's hearing. He's feeling. He, he has everything going. He is suffering. Uh, I mean, unimaginable suffering here. I can't imagine it. I, I, I've heard Brother W. A. preach on hell, and, and it's almost like he'd take you up to the door, and, and he would let you see in for just a moment. But 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 even that is not can't, can't get you to what what this man is experiencing. No matter how loud I preach or how quiet I preach, no matter how many tears that I could shed. Can't be emotional enough. This man is suffering in hell. This man has dropped off into fire. And nothing is going to change that. Nothing. I thought about this fitly, his supplications in hell. Now, and he is concerned about someone else. Can I say this? Just for us as children of God. Try to quit living your life for yourself. You're here for others. I'm not against having a good time. I'm not against making money. I'm not against having a nice home and car. I'm not against that at all. But for heaven's sake, do something to help somebody else. You're not here just for you. This man finally, he is in hell. He is on fire. He is in torment. And now, now he is making supplications. He's praying. He's, he's asking for help. I want to just send last week's Put some water, take some water, and put it on my tongue. He's praying. He's supplicating not only for himself, but he's supplicating for his brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's concerned about his brothers. Yeah. We don't see that before now. Mm -hmm. Most people that have a lot of riches are only concerned about themselves. Right. Yeah. Not everybody, but most. What's wrong with our country? We got too much. Mm -hmm. Preacher, we poor. You ain't poor. No. Ain't nobody no. even poor. You got more than most. Yeah. And now this man, he's all of a sudden realizing that that, that not only him, but his brothers are headed down the same path that he walked. And he's asking. 
Abraham to send someone. He had suffocated. I wonder if he was in his life. I want to notice this about this. Prayers cannot be answered in heaven. He asked for water for his tongue. He didn't get it. He asked for someone to be raised from the dead to go to his brothers. Now he's not even praying for himself. He's praying for somebody else. This prayer cannot be answered. When a person goes to hell, there is no prayers being answered no more. If you're going to do some praying, it better be on this side. Amen. If you're going to do some praying, it better be here. If you're going to pray for a lost loved one, it better be here because you can't change it once they're gone. You can't change it. You may be here this morning and and you're not saved. You think, man, I don't know. But listen to me. You can't pray when you're gone. Mm -hmm. When you're in hell, you're not going to be able to pray if you didn't answer. This man begged Abraham for his brothers, and he could not get an answer for them. He could not have them uh, get what he wanted. I want to notice this about his brothers. They were still at home at his father's house. Maybe they were younger. Now, I, I believe the Scripture has a lot to it, more than we'll ever know. But he asks that he would go to his father's house. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren. Evidently, his brothers are still at home. I began to ponder that and I thought, you know, Lord, why, why is that? If they could have been a lot younger. Or, but I, why does he want him to go to his father's? I thought about this as a father. I wonder if the rich man's father pushed him to go the route of riches. You ever seen somebody do that? Fathers push their children and to pursuing the world and the things of the world and the fame of the world. How many sports figures are where they're at today because their dad and their mom pushed them, pushed them, pushed them. And they get to all that money, all that fame, and it ruins their life. How many little girls are pushed to be beauty queens. You hear me? How many girls are pushed to, to live out the dreams of their mother? Right. And their mother's dreams for the world and for the times of the world. You push them, you push them, you push them right off in there. Was he doing the same with his brother? You see, son, what you got to do is you got to pursue money. Money's power. Money gives you things. Money gives you friends in high places. I was thinking about this. Will you get into eternity? You may have a million dollars in the bank. You're not going to have one penny out of it with you. Your children, whether they be wise or whether they be fools, Solomon said, what are they going to do with you? You ain't going to have them ever with you. This man, he fared something for every day. He, he, he lived his life for the world. He pursued the things of the world. No doubt he had servants. I can see him now riding out the gate past Lazarus. And he's riding in a chariot or a, 
or a buggy of some kind with some of the finest horses and a servant driving him down the road. And as they pass by Lazarus, he looks down and he's up there begging. And Lazarus said, Would you come to Christ? Let me tell you about a second. And he scoffed and rode off. Was his father doing the same with his brothers? I believe the rich man in hell was he knew. God, I want to send somebody down there to the Father's house. Lord, they're down there and they're going to go the same path I go. They're going to die and go to hell just like I am. Please send somebody down there. But the prayers cannot be answered in hell. Not one. Lastly, I want to say this. What does Abraham point him to about his brothers? The Bible said, Abraham saith unto him, verse 29, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Isn't that strange how he knew repentance was required? Isn't that strange? I wonder where he heard that. Reckon the priest told him one day. Reckon Lazarus may have said something one day. I found out this about God. He don't tell you everything he does. Amen. He don't tell you. You pray about something. You ask God to do something for you. That especially when you're praying about someone else, He's going to send me. And you may not never know. I've seen God do that. But He knew He had to repent. And He said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. How, what, what was Moses? What was He doing? He said this. The Scripture. The scriptures are how to stay out of hell. He said, if they don't hear Moses and the prophets, they're not going to be persuaded. The one rose from the dead. Be careful of these near death experiences and, and, and all that stuff. I'm not trusting in that that I'm going to heaven. I'm trusting in Christ. He said, if they hear not Moses, and the, what would Moses tell you today if he was standing right here? He'd tell you about Jesus. Amen. What would all the prophets tell you? Isaiah over and over and over again. Talking about that one that's coming. They tell you about Jesus. Preacher, what is the person to do to stay out of hell? Believe what the Word of God says. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, yes. and I will give you rest. Amen. But God commended His love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. Preacher, how do, you, how do you avoid hell? Believe what this book says. This book says He came to seek and to save that which was lost. The only reason you go to hell is because you reject Christ. That's right. You reject what God said. So this man, he's in hell today. There ain't nothing I can do about that. There's not one thing I can do about that. I pray somehow, some way. Before Dad died, that he trusted Christ. I won't know until I get to eternity. As far as I know, he never did. I can't change it. This man.
man went to hell because he rejected what the Word of God says. I don't know what his brothers ever did. I don't know if they ever trusted Christ or not. Doesn't say that. But if they did, if they're in heaven, it's because they trust what the Word of God says. Come to Christ. Call on me. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm not talking about the heavenly Jesus. Forgive me and, and, and just flippantly. No, I'm talking about you know you're a sinner. You know you deserve hell because of your sin. And you come with all of your heart and ask God to forgive you. And ask God to cleanse you of your sin. The Bible says His blood can cleanse you from all sin if you would come. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, I don't know what you do, but I, I pray that it would affect me more than anybody. And God, I would realize that sinners are going to hell. Lord, I have children that need to be saved. And Lord, I'm going to beg you on this side of eternity to save them. Lord, I'm going to beg you for the little children in our church they would come a day that they would know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Lord, I pray that you would speak to hearts this morning. I pray that, Lord, you would do a work in us as a church that we would realize people are dying and going to hell. And that we would be busy. And that, Lord, if so be, you would lay us at someone's gate. That, God, we would lay there with a message of salvation. And God, I pray that you would bless this service. Help us this morning. We love you in Jesus' name. With your heads bowed and still eyes still closed. You say, Preacher, what am I supposed to do if I'm lost? Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus! longer you sin and put it on, the more likely you're going to go to hell. I'm asking you this morning, if you're not saved, you know you're not. God has been dealing with you. He's been putting His finger in your heart. And you know you're not saved. Would you come to Christ this morning? Would you allow Him to wash away all your sins. Would you do that this morning? Would you allow Jesus? He's the kindest friend that you've ever met. He's the most loving God. Would you come this morning? Before it's too late. Would you come? you allow God to save you from hell? He don't want you to go there. He wants you to be saved. Would you come? Time is running out. I sat there in that room I got to where I was counting Daddy's breath. He would breathe about three times. And then he would stop breathing for about 30 seconds. And he did that for hour after hour. Got into two days of that. There came a time when he finally took his last breath. And he stepped out of his life. He went out into eternity. I thought 
that's trapped. And, and, and the more I sat there and counted the time, the 30 seconds in between, I began to think, you know, Darren, that 30 seconds you just counted off, that's your 30 seconds too. 30 seconds, I can't never get that. I need to be busy about the Lord and His work and doing what He wants me to do. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, but I beg you to come. Be like Lazarus. Be the beggar. Don't be the rich man. The rich man has nothing today, but the beggar has it all. Father, please bless the thoughts today. God help us as we live to be a light for others, but they don't have to go ahead. We want to thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I pray that you will take the thoughts and do as you believe God would have you to. If you're not saved, I pray that God would leave you alone today and that you would come to Him. Don't go to hell. Don't let the devil deceive you into thinking, no, that's not real. It is real. God is real. And He wants you to be saved. All right. God bless you. We'll be dismissed. We'll see you tonight at 5. Start, start right there.